recently it was brought to our attention that there were some social media posts uh, going around in reference to suspicious activity that was occurring out on the 13th Avenue area in the 4200 block uh, related incidents that made people uncomfortable. Uh, as we looked into those and did some analysis on our calls for service in that area, we found a, a small number of calls for services that were related to suspicious activity. Uh, of those calls for service, uh, we found that uh, uh, about half of those are unrelated uh, to each other, and we have uh, the other half that might possibly be related to an individual who has a, a, a history of approaching people and talking to them about different subjects. At this time, we don't have any other information that would indicate any kind of uh, nefarious activity related to these calls for service at this time. Uh, and uh, we are continuing to investigate the calls for service at this time as far as looking at some videos to see if there's any connection uh, to those. We do have some uh, issues as far as providing um, accurate descriptions of individuals. Our descriptions in these incidences are, are very wide and very about uh, clothes, size, size, race. Uh, so it doesn't really allow us to make a determination as to whether or not it's all the same person. So we'll continue to do uh, follow up on all of these cases as we did with uh, most cases that come into our police department. So. Do you have like a, a steady number? And so far in that area, we found six cases. Uh, half of those cases are, are not related that we can find from the information that was provided during our investigation, our initial investigation. The other uh, half may possibly be related to one person, but we don't have a strong connection. Has okay. this one person been arrested for these things? Is this something you can be arrested for? I know it's not a crime to be creepy. No, it, it's not. And unless there's something more, obviously there is disorderly conduct. If the person would make statements of annoyed, alarm, or harassed, and it's really an individual uh, perception about those statements. Uh, and the individual we're going to speak to in the future here uh, does have some past history of doing the similar thing. What type of comments are we talking about here? What are the nature of those comments that people feel uncomfortable? They're just asking questions about uh, their personal lives a little bit and uh, just things that normal people wouldn't approach you out of the blue with. You just ask questions about your family and things like that. And what's kind of the time frame? Has it been like the past couple weeks or? So we're looking at from uh, January 28th until 2 8 today. So there's been six calls in that area. You think three of them are related to this individual you plan on speaking to here in the future? Yeah, possibly. But even within the description of the people, uh, some of them is very hard to tell if it's the same person. The descriptions that we were given are very varied. Uh, and one of the issues that we have is that we get this information sometimes, you know, much uh, later than when the incident occurred. So as people are, are having these things happen to them. Of course, we don't have time to go out and necessarily find the person in the area, so which is a problem for us as well. So providing accurate description and as much information as you can, vehicle information, uh, if there is anything like that is so important to us. And time and this is also important as well.